Welcome to the Sports Ethicist Show, coming to you from the basement of Burpee on the campus of Rockford University in Sportstown, USA, Rockford, Illinois. I am Sean Klein, the Sports Ethicist. The Sports Ethicist Show discusses the many ethical and philosophical issues that arise in and around sport. You can read the Sports Ethicist blog at sportsethicist.com, where you can also download podcasts of previous shows, subscribe to the podcast, or find links to related information. The Sports Ethicist is also on Facebook and Twitter, and you can email the show at sportsethicist at gmail.com. So the 2013 baseball season is in the books. Regular listeners know that I am a Red Sox fan, and uh, and my frequent co-host, Mike Perry, is a Cardinals fan. Well, the Sox and the Cardinals met in the 109th Fall Classic. So it is only seeming, it only seems right that Mike and I do a show about the World Series. And then we also are going to talk about some of the postseason, uh, not postseason, but the annual awards for Major League Baseball, things like the MVP and whatnot. So, Mike, one word to describe the 2013 baseball season. Almost. Almost. Okay. <laughs> So maybe you want to explain that. <laughs> well, almost, I know what you yeah, mean, all, but <laughs> as as a, you know, they the Cardinals got there and almost made it. And um I guess if there's another word it's like it was much easier to take this time around than as, as opposed and, to 04. As opposed to 04, which was really hard because it had been since 82 since they'd won before. Okay. That and so you know, the problems of being in the World Series a lot as a fan, it's it's difficult. <laughs> So, uh, so right. So before '06, you guys hadn't won since, since 1982 against okay. the. Then they because I remember when as a kid I had two game sevens that they lost. They mm-hmm. lost game seven against the Royals when they were up three to. They were up three to one against the Royals and got beat, and then they were up three to two against the Twins and ended up getting beat in seven. So that was my biggest memory as a kid were those two key World Series when All I was right. at my peak of fandom, and so it was like crushing both times. You know, it's um, this. This brings to mind. Um, the I think the importance of having those crushing defeats when you're a kid with a sports team, I think it, it stays with you mm-hmm. in a way that the wins don't, I think. I mean, although I don't have the wins from a kid, so I can't yeah. necessarily compare that. <laughs> but it does seem like people that have that long-term relationship with their teams often starts with um, a positive thing, but then... Mm-hmm. A couple negatives in there, not yeah. negative, you know, like in terms of losses and and stomach punches, and and you just you kind of stick with it, and mm-hmm. then you kind of ride you ride through those ups and downs. And I think if you just kind of grew up with a bunch of wins, and then they lose, you're more likely just to be like, either just let it go and not worry about it, or just kind of walk away from the it, team because you're sick of it. Yeah. So you, you I mean, that's not no, what we I, intended to talk about yeah, at all, yeah, yeah. fandom. But you know, I always end up talking about. No, fandom, I, I can, I can see that. I mean, yeah. that's, again, that's the whole. I guess it, when I first started following, I was nine. They won the World Series in '82. I didn't know much about baseball then. I said, "Oh, that's a cool team. Mm-hmm. I like their uniforms. They're pretty not, birds. They're not the Cubs. <laughs> they're not the Twins, which right. everybody around me was fans of. So I kind of stuck with them. Yeah. And then, yeah, then, and then it was 19, It was 2006 until they won the World Series. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I I think that there's something to that, but that's that's we've talked about that before. Yes. But I, I do think that that's there's something about um, the positive and negatives of a fandom that that go together that make a true fan. All right, so almost, and then so you guys won in '06, you won in '11. That's weird to say '11, but I feel like it, but '011 doesn't. Oh, '11, right. yeah, yeah, '11. But uh, and so this one. You, it was. It would have been nice. It, obviously, you were. You. I know you were rooting hard for them to win. Oh yeah. But it's not the end. You're not. You're not ready to jump off any cliffs. No, anything. and they're not. <laughs> they didn't lose their star player at the end of the year. They're not in a state of flux. They're actually younger and more youthful right. than I've seen them in a long time. And you didn't get swept. And we didn't get swept. There's always that, right? <laughs> I wouldn't want to win in the year 2013 because I'm guessing with that number, there's probably some sort of enabled curse that's going to happen now. You on think? the team that won, so I would mm. be a little wary about it. Yeah, I don't really go for curses. <laughs> I don't believe in them <laughs> anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, you know, I was thinking about this question for me, and the obvious word is redemption for the Red Sox. After the last season. After last season, worst to first, uh, that just last year was a joke 
joke of a manager. The team was a joke. No one, people were just bitter about the team and just written, writing them off. And, you know, this year from the get-go was, was a different team, a different feel. People were on board. Some of that had to do with the marathon bombings, which I think connects into the idea of redemption as well. And then just through the through the season, the game, so many games in which they were down, then would come back and win. That has a feel of redemption. And then even even within the series itself, with um, different players who maybe weren't performing, and then would have a big moment. Like Victorino seemed to really pick his spots. Didn't really hit except for like you know a grand slam and and uh, important you know extra base hit here mm-hmm. or there. Other than that, didn't do anything offensively. Uh, and so that, I mean, that's not quite redemption, but it, it kind of, it feels that way, that there was all these sort of down spots and then overcoming those and, and achieving something. I, I was thinking of it, I had two thoughts at the end of the season. One was when La Russa came in and took over as manager. Who? L- when Tony La Russa okay. came over and took over as manager for St. Louis. When was that? When when did they? La Russa what, was like La Russa would have been years 95 ago, yeah. I guess he was there for 14 or 16 yeah. or something like that so okay. he came in after Tory okay. left and, um, and and so he turned it around fairly quickly but it was it was slow incremental steps they would make the playoffs then they made the NLCS and then they made the World Series then they won the World Series it wasn't immediate it was, mm-hmm. you know, it was just consistent more right. consistent than I've ever seen him play and so, you know, more well, that's microcosm. That's the, the Cardinals. So you have, so you have Mantini yeah. come his first year, and he takes him to Game 7 of the NLCS. His second season, he takes him to Game 6 of the World Series. So you figure, you know... That's there, not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. And so, um, and the other thing, I think we had talked about this before, was the chances of the Cardinals meeting up with the Red Sox, two storied teams like that. But both years where the Red Sox have this added narrative behind them. Yeah. It just hardly seemed unfair. <laughs> in 04, you know, it was the head breaking the curse, right. coming back against the, 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 Yankees. the Yankees, and yeah. then this year, the, you the, know, bombing. the bombings. And you can't even critique that because you sound like a jerk if right. you do. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, and, and I'm not critiquing it, but, it, but it's, yeah, it's right. just like, oh, come on. <laughs> well, like we've, you know, um, the idea of, of narrative in sports is but at, at, at the same time almost what it's all about. And also, kind of meaningless because <laughs> i mean the the as you know you can talk about the um the marathon as part of the narrative of the red sox and it certainly is and the red sox uh, and that's you know part of the conception of of the team as redemption or overcoming um uh, a, you know bad situation and the what the team meant to uh coming back you know a week later after the bombing Having that big event, Poppy with his 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 uh, fantastic speech, uh, and then you know and, and and starting to win and winning back the fans uh, and just all coalescing around the marathon and how much of a part of it was internally to the Red Sox team. They traveled with the six one seven jersey all over the place, and it was an internal thing. It wasn't didn't seem like a PR thing. It wasn't something like, hey, let's use this to our advantage. It was more that the guys on the team saw this as something that brought them together and continued with that, and it brought them together. And then what they did in the city, going out to the hospitals and working with people, and not, not again, not as PR events, but just going and doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that all of that, it did f- have this feel of, well, it's got to end with them winning the World Series at Fenway for the first time in 95 years because that, that makes the narrative that much better. But if they didn't, that's, then it's not the narrative. And so the narrative yeah. is something that is really post hoc that you put on afterwards that helps you make sense of it, but at the same time can be really deceptive in terms of what really happened. So you you were you were look like you were ready to jump in on something. So I I was I'm not. It's that it's the narrative afterwards, right? You know, if the Cardinals win, it, it's Mike it's Michael Waka because he right. already had to win Game Six. It's the youth. It's Matani in his second year, coaching Little League two years before and never having an experience. You know that there's mm-hmm. that that kind of stuff. But um, going going back to the connection to the to the to the bombing when it's internalized and it's how the team uses it to do good in the city and to coalesce in the clubhouse 
seems like it's 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 a really good thing, right? Yeah. Then the the only part that becomes cynical is when you're watching it on television and it's the national broadcast, and then they put in the the weepy the weepy music and the montages. Yeah. That's just a symptomatic of sports in general. Though. Yeah. That's watching the Olympics and all the sad, you know. And so you try and like you can't. I don't wanna, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, don't want to get cynical about that because it's not really fair. Like, what, what are you supposed to not acknowledge it either? Right. But um. When they and they go over the top on the national network about it, and it, and because it's the national network, they're not really connected to it. But even you know, I was watching the the uh, the mar- not the marathon, the um, the parade. Uh, they broadcast it on on Major League Baseball Network, and but they were carrying the local. I missed that. Yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> and they were carrying the local uh, uh, cable station, and that's what the that's what who the announcers were and stuff. And I felt. Like even they didn't know what they were talking about, right? I mean, this was they were like it was like having like the weather person talking mm-hmm. about the team and how they did. And it's like you don't know what the hell you're talking yeah. about. So I mean th- that too, and and you know, and then to have Joe Buck do it just you know makes anything well, just bad. There's but. a way to fix the World Series, is that the home team gets their home broadcast people to broadcast the game and mm. be as biased as they want and the and the audience knows that's what they're watching and then you have and imagine, that could be fun imagine yeah, that like that game one is you know in Boston by Boston game right. three in St. Louis by St. Louis what I'd like to see on the, you the know, generic stuff um, is having different options for people because you know like you have the SAP button if you want to hear it in Spanish well you, there should be a couple different options one you could just and, I, and this would be great for football too you can have the national you can pick the local, which local you want to listen to, or you can just have field sounds mm-hmm. and not have any broadcast, and just have the broad, just have the vi- the um, uh, the video come through with the sounds of the field, uh, and have the or you know maybe the internal or the PA announcer, right. and that's it. Um, you know, and and that should just be part of the package. You know, because I mean, if you if you have the MLB app, and I, I think you do, yes. right, and you listen to some of the games on there. You know, Not, you can, I have the radio version. That's all I have. Version. But you can choose which broadcast to listen to. Yes. I think that would be great on TV, you know, particularly for football, because I cannot stand the announcers in football. Um, I, I just, ugh, I listen to it on, on mute. Um, and So you don't really <clears throat> listen. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> good point. Sorry, I couldn't. So. But, uh, right, I, I mean, so I have it on mute, and I'm, I don't listen. I watch, and I mean, there's, sometimes I turn it on when there's... Uh, you know, when when the referees are trying to figure something out and I have to mm-hmm. turn it on to see what's going on. Cause I, it, Where they d- explain once again how the instant replay works. Yeah. For <laughs> exactly. people watching football. Right. <laughs> uh, so, but it would be great. I'd love to have just the field sounds mm-hmm. and just have the field or just that or to have the local for the homers because I don't mind listening to, the, to them as much. So that would be cool in baseball, too. And I think, you know, doing it on on the World Series. But I like your idea, too, because then it creates a whole different dynamic Mm -hmm. nationally for it. Uh, And they don't have anything to lose because it's not like people are really watching it all that much anyway. This was um, the fourth lowest in TV ratings uh, World Series. It was the worst six-game series in terms of ratings. Um, But that's that's symptomatic of of baseball is that it's a regional game. It's not a national game. And so I'm sure the numbers and... Um, in in and around St. Louis and the Midwest and in and in New England were through the roof. I'm yeah. sure that's the stadium I'm, numbers are good for a lot of the teams that are yeah. functioning right. The, 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 and the, the local TV, I'm local, sure yeah. I didn't look those up, but I'm sure that they were really really good ratings locally. But nationally, it's just not gonna. It just you know unless you have a Yankees Dodgers, I don't think you're you're gonna get national numbers. And that's just this. That's just where baseball's at. Yeah. But and I, I don't think that that speaks to anything more than just the nature of, of baseball that there's just, you know, and I think we'll get to this a little bit when we talk about the awards is you baseball is, is pretty much a game where you watch your team and your, or teams that are closely related to your teams. You're not watching teams that really aren't part of your sphere. I mean, you know, and like, you know, uh, I couldn't tell you the first thing about the Marlins. Mm-hmm. No idea. Nothing. I don't I mean the Fernandez. They're pretty. I don't really like that. No, I, uh, it's I, colorful. It was a sarcastic. Yeah. Yes, but it's very colorful. I mean, I have a thing about Florida teams anyway. I don't think Florida should have any professional teams. But <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, sort of. But uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I thought yeah, baseball is 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 like that. I mean, it's a real local thing, and it always has been. I think, mm-hmm. and so that's just the nature of baseball. There's there's uh, whereas opposed to football. 
is the kind of thing where typically you know more than what's going on and you may not you know you may not be following all the teams and some of it may be because of fantasy but because all the games are sort of played together in a chunk i think people always kind of if you pay attention to football you kind of know what's going on with most of the other teams and you know what's kind of going on in the national storylines whereas baseball i i just don't feel it. you know what's going on with your team maybe your division but that's it yeah so uh, and that translates obviously in, into the ratings. Um, I did want to, you know, in terms of redemption as the theme, one other factor um, that I think was an important part of why redemption is is the word is is uh, is John Lackey, um, one of the pitchers for the Red Sox, who a year ago was someone that most Red Sox fans were like, "What the hell are we going to do with this guy? Mm-hmm. He's got this contract, big contract. He's done nothing for us. No, he was just." arguably one of the most unpopular players on the team but then he he you know had a fantastic season uh and was an important part of the team through the season and then in the postseason had some big games and important games um both against the tigers and and against uh your cardinals and and so that's uh that too is is part of this theme of redemption at the same time i i I kind of i'm comfortable with the word redemption it seems too much yeah like why 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 do you think too much redemption as i I, they had a bad season last year right it's not like they were committed some immoral no and it's not like they were the pirates who hadn't had a winning season in in a year right and so i mean i i that's why i would say over redemption would maybe be stretching it a bit yeah Um, it makes me it just makes me pleasant surprise (laughs) yeah well (laughs) no it's unexpected unexpected Um, you know, and that um, one of the uh, the local announcers for the for the Boston radio that I listened to, you know, what an unexpected gift of mm-hmm. a season is the way he described it when they won. And yeah. um, I thought, that, okay, that I like that. Yeah. I like that. I mean, because it was it it was unexpected. I mean, I didn't I wasn't in the camp that thought that they were going to be as uh, you know fourth place team like a lot of people were predicting. You know, if you go back, you know, uh, I, I th- I'm on record. I think on the podcast yeah. as well as in other places that I that saying. I thought the team could be competitive. It's going to depend on their pitching. And if they pitch well, I think they'll be in the mix. Yeah. And then once you're in the mix, anything can happen. So that's I, I stand by that as as uh, prognosticating the uh, the World Series there. Well, but. Every, <laughs> and you know, the expectations, every year since 2009, the, the critics have picked um, Brewers. They picked the Reds. Last year, they picked the Reds and the Pirates. Very seldom, even at the beginning of the season, even the every reset, very seldom is St. Louis. Oh, they're they're good, but they overplayed last year. They'll probably be mm-hmm. second or third. They're good, but they overplayed last year. I wouldn't be surprised to see. Maybe this year, this is something different yeah. now. The fact that they have so much Some youth, young but, guys. but it's been like that. Every well, the Reds season. have been biting at uh, biting at your tails or heels or whatever the right. metaphor is for for a while. And Pirates maybe getting rid of Baker will help. Yeah, oh, yeah, but he's just not the. I don't know. I yeah. just I don't see him in the postseason ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but and they may have peaked as yeah. well. Uh, the Pirates, I think, are are still poised to continue to improve. Um, they have a good manager. They have a lot of young players, so it's not. I don't. I don't think they're gonna. Uh, and they've been improving the last couple of years. Yeah. So it's not as if this was a flash in the pan. Right. It was, they finally sustained it till the end. But in previous last two seasons, they 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 had yeah. great early part of the seasons and then collapsed. And this year, they they didn't. And so that's that's a huge learning experience for those young players. So I, I think that they'll be uh, they'll be better uh, going into into the future too. Um, but yeah, it's so for both of us, I think it was a bit unexpected, not mm-hmm. not shocking, not like oh my god, I can't believe this, right? But sort of you, you just. I don't think in April either one of us were saying, yeah, we'll meet in the World Series, except no. as a joke, you know, to each other. But, you know, I, I, I don't think it's um, – but so I, I like unexpect, unexpected gift of a season I think is, is great. And I think mm-hmm. it – gift also captures the way the, – the, the closeness of the team too, to the city and to the fans. That yeah. there, was, there was something – I mean, a large part of it had to do with the marathon, but there was something special about this one. Mm-hmm. Well, um, it was like looking back um, – and I'm a broken record for anybody who knows me, but <laughs> I don't think I'll ever have a year like the 2011 one. Mm-hmm. You, what are the chance? I mean, down ten and a half games, down yeah. in, in game six. I mean, I just I don't think you could you couldn't craft a more improbable story if you if you tried to say this was actually happened. And mm-hmm. so I mean, I'm sure even if they do win again, 
can't imagine it ever reaching that level of drama. Right. Which I would say probably similar to the O four. You're never going to reach that level of catharsis or that yeah. level of you know. But you know, I, and obviously this is a conversation that I've been having uh, with a lot of my Red Sox fans, um, and I'm hoping to get my my friend Joe uh, on to talk about it um, because. You know, what is the feel of the three different World Series of this uh, century for us? Because um, 04, obviously, you know, breaking the curse in quotation marks, right? <laughs> um, and, you know, 86 years, all that, you know, getting going through the Yankees and coming back from 3 0, all of that. The World Series, though, was a, you know, it, it was horrible. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to say that, but it was a bit of an afterthought. It was a bit, yeah. it was anticlimactic, right? It was, I didn't think we were going to sweep you, but it did seem like, how could we not win the World Series after mm-hmm. what we've just done? You know, they we just, they just like kind of just turned it around and just boom, they were just a juggernaut and it just, you know, like narrative, right? I mean, yeah. how could it not happen that way? Well, and then in 06, I'll never forget the headline, and when the, Cardinals beat the Mets, which they weren't supposed to. That was the year they had like the worst, I think, record for any team ever going to the World Series. And um, they said Tigers in three. One of the major, I mean, Tiger, Tigers right, yeah, yeah, yeah. in three. That was how sure. Well, I, was I, I, was, game. I remember telling you, I was like, yeah, I think it's going to be the Tigers. And, and yeah, you guys crushed them. Yeah. So um, well, that's the Tigers. They're always they're chokers. Uh, what? You couldn't have told me that. We didn't know each other then. In 06? Yeah. I came here in 08. Huh. That's I remember weird. saying that's it to weird. somebody. That's weird that we yeah. I, I didn't mean to call you out different. I saw it was interesting. Like, we, like huh. Cause Who'd they play in a lot? We the might Rangers. have actually been together in grad school. Maybe I said time. it in, in uh, maybe about the Rangers. Though. The Rangers. Because I remember yeah. saying, oh, well, yeah, well, the yeah, AL right, team yeah. will win. Because yeah. I'm always, I always think the AL team's going to win. So I remember thinking the Tigers. Yeah. And I assume I said You're it to somebody. You're misguided that way, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> um, Right. Okay. So, what were we talking about? We were oh oh six. Right. Oh, and then oh four. So oh four, the World Series was was awesome. It was amazing. It was just ah, but it was so it was a blur. Oh seven was you know solid professional team. They were very good. Nothing un, really unexpected about it. Not very exciting either in a lot of ways. I mean, it was you know. I'm sure if I looked at highlights, I'd remember things, but it was kind of forgettable. I mean, I, I hate to say that, like the World Series, like them, but you know, and it was All great. All the to, Cub fans in the yeah, area. Are. I'm going. I'm going to kill you. Do we uh, have to? <laughs> but I mean, it was, and I don't, I, I don't want to sound ungrateful or or just kind of um, spoiled as a fan, but you know, coming so quick after '04, and it just, it just didn't have the same. Meaning, I mean, I still was excited about it. I mean, I, I remember um, being being here and being excited about the Red Sox, and me, you know, it was my first. It was my first semester here at Rockford when mm-hmm. it was going on. And um, uh, do you remember? Do you remember Jane Higgins? Yeah, yeah. So she was a car, she was a Colorado fan, and so we, you know, we, we we had some conversations and stuff. But so I was nervous. You know, I remember being nervous. I wasn't sure the color the Rockies had been on this tear. Right, this is sort of historic tear. So I was like, I don't know, we've never played them. I have no idea what's going to happen. And and you know, in each game in itself wasn't like a blowout or anything like that. So it, it was a competitive series in a lot of ways. I mean, looking back, the narrative makes it seem like we just rolled over them and it yeah. was a foregone conclusion, but it really wasn't. And but it it just doesn't. I mean, it's it didn't hold a special place um, except as uh, having done it again so quickly. That that was really what marked it as as unique or, or interest or special in, mm-hmm. in terms of the the red sox lore this one is it just has a different feel all around part of it big part of it i think is the marathon uh and the bombings and the way that they came together after that and the role that that's played just throughout the whole season then the team the the, the characters on the team the beards uh and just the, the team was a lot more fun loving a lot more of a of a, a team to get behind the 07 team was more straight laced, quiet, uh, just like I said, professional. This team was was you know had some yahoos on it, and and uh, um, just it was more fun to watch uh, throughout the season um, or listen to as as I usually mm-hmm. did, uh, and pay attention to throughout the season and throughout the playoffs. And Poppy, you know, was back to his old form, and, and it was just it was more exciting. And Koji as their closer was just lights out and so it was it was more exciting and way just a lot more connected to to the team um particularly coming after the lows of the last two seasons 
and so that it made made this one that much more of a gift mm-hmm. uh, to go w- back with uh, with that theme. So, um, so gift, and then winning maybe gift is the word. Yeah, gift might be better. Um, and and then you know coming. Um, uh, shoot, lost my train of thought there. Oh, oh, ninety five years it, having you know the first one in right. Fenway because I believe they lost two of in Game Seven to the St. Louis in the past. Yes, in, in, in Fenway, 46, right? Yeah, six and then um, sixty sixty seven. Did we seven? Seventy five was against the Reds. Right. Yeah, it was so. in six. It was in the sixties. Sixty seven. Then. Yeah. yeah. So sixty seven and and nineteen forty six. Yeah. Um, and. Yeah, and the Red Sox have, ne- as I've mentioned to you, the Red Sox have never won a Game 7 in the World Series, even when they won. Uh, so they still haven't done that. They still Does haven't that done that. They've never. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, that's the thing we can deal with next year. Okay. We get over that hump next year and, and when, we, when we beat you in seven games. Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, that's even when we won the eight-game series back in, like, 1900 something mm-hmm. right 1905 or something like that um you know they had an eight game series we still lost game seven <laughs> so they've never won a game seven so uh that's what scared that's why i, I just felt it was like we have to win game six we, mm-hmm. not because of, that that means anything in terms of playing a game but just mentally as a fan i just was like i'm gonna be completely unhinged if there's a game seven and then anything can happen in a game seven and so i just ah so I was glad it ended in six. I know you're probably not, but I was glad that it ended in six because um, I, I don't think I could have lived through game seven. I was sort of so emotionally strung out and it just that to have that. And then, you know, it was Halloween. I needed to go out with my son on Halloween and I would have been freaking out about the game. I would have gladly not gone out for Halloween. <laughs> 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 Sorry, boys. <laughs> um, before we move on to the awards, I guess the only, one of the other storylines in this world series were some of the bizarre clay uh, cl- calls bizarre calls bizarre calls bizarre plays that, that my mind kind of squished those together into a bizarre case yeah uh <laughs> so you have the obstruction call right uh the pickoff to end the game yeah and then um some well, possibly questionable moves on the part of uh, Matheny in terms of keeping pitchers in or pitching to poppy um but uh so th- so well thoughts on those okay we'll go backwards yeah. The, the questionable moves by Matheny are great moves if they win. Yeah. I, I, I never get that. Like, I remember after game five, um, they were just tearing apart La Russa with, in the in the 11 World Series because of some bad pitching calls, and they said they just lost it. It's all over, and it's going to look back at the series he mismanaged, and then they win, and it's the whole season right. he managed. So I, well, it's the narrative again. Yeah, it's the know. narrative. And so I, 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 I mean, I'm surprised with some of the decisions he made, particularly sticking with Lynn and and not giving Miller much right. much thought. Um, keeping Waka in for as long as he did yeah. at last. But by then, it, it had nothing to do with the pitching. It had everything to do with the fact that they just didn't hit. They hit, yeah. they hit 330 with runners in scoring position this season, the highest 30, 40 points above anybody else. Set a record for, I don't know how, how long it's it, it stood. It's been a while. And um, they had players on their teams. Craig, who just came back for the series, right. batted 450 with runners in scoring And position. could barely walk. And could barely walk, yeah. right? And so th- their bats didn't turn on ever, yeah. really throughout the entire postseason. And they still got by Pittsburgh and, 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 and L.A. Yeah. So the second thing with the pickoff, mm-hmm. kid in a World Series not paying attention and getting picked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, got, was, that was bizarre, though, because they well, had a chance. They had Beltran yep. up to Bay. That's the series right there. Yeah. To me, that was the series. When that, that happened, that just was knew it. it was done. I, just, yeah. I was knew it was I'm like, okay. Well, you know, you it's interesting because, you know, when when they've talked to Koji and David Ross, the catcher, um, about that in Napoli and Farrell, it, it, was, it was really just kind of an instinctual play that Koji did. Mm-hmm. That it wasn't that they were like, okay, let's look for the let's look for the pickoff, let's look for the pickoff, or you know, or let's or Ross signaling or anything. I mean, Koji just sort of said, I just just threw over there, mm-hmm. you know, just on almost on a whim, and I think partly that's what that's yeah. why the, the well, rookie he, wasn't and looking for. He lost it, his so. fo- he lost his footing a little yeah. bit. He got nervous. He stri- and he just he got caught, and he wasn't it, expecting it, it because but, it didn't yeah. didn't there wasn't. The the other t- the Red Sox weren't showing any yeah. signs that they were even looking to do but, a pickoff. But, so. but uh, uh, you would think at that stage 
your run means nothing. If right. I mean, you should just be practically standing on the base. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that's the mistake Stand, there. I mean, it's it not, doesn't matter if you get to second or to third on a single because right. you're going to need to get all. I mean, you got to get home anyway. You get you're, home. Yeah, because even just uh, so. so. And there's only one out, so it's not yep. like a you know getting to second and then the guy can do can get you home on right. some kind of sacrifice because then the game's over anyway. Yep. So yeah, your your job is just to be a run, not yep. not to not to make a run happen. Yep. So um, yeah, so that I mean that's certainly a mistake on on his part not not playing it closer there. But I also think it was just it, I don't want to say a lucky play, but just an instinctual feel that he mm-hmm. that Koji just threw it over and. Um, you know, Napoli almost was kind of surprised by it. You know, everyone was, what? So I think that that's... Well, the cameras were surprised by everybody, it. Everybody, I thought it was a replay <laughs> yeah. of something else or like like they were showing something that happened like earlier in the, in the game or earlier yeah. in, in... And all of a sudden, what? It's over? It's crazy. Um, and then the obstruction, you know, I mean... I, the, there's a no... That's a no-win situation because yeah, by the... The law, the they the made rules. they made the right call, and if it's a regular season game, it's not as because it's a World Series game. But yeah. then because it is, if it would have been the opposite, and they yeah. wouldn't have called it, and the, it would have been the other way, the same kind of, yeah. and then you would have actually said, "Wait a minute, look at the lo- look at the rule. You didn't follow the rule just because it was a World Series." I mean, I think I don't think there's any other way to make that. I just think it's yeah, it was just bizarre. Yeah, I mean, and you don't. You know, I mean, partly my looking at it when I first looked at it was it, it seems to me like, well, Middlebrooks wasn't interfering. He mm-hmm. was just going for the ball, yeah. you know, and that the runner wasn't looking to see if it was clear to run. He just was right. running and yeah. wasn't even looking where he was going. So it seemed unfair from my point of view as a mm-hmm. Red Sox fan. It's like, well, you know, what could we have done differently? Yeah. But then that's that's just the fact of the yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. Intent doesn't matter. That, the baseline doesn't – it's the baseline set by where the runner's yeah. going, and, and he was running, whether or not he's looking or not. I mean, the fact of the matter – kind of going back to the pickoff, similar to pickoff, the fact of the matter is Salty shouldn't have thrown the ball. Yeah. Yeah, that's the – I mean, yeah. he shouldn't have thrown the ball. And and that's what I like once they describe that rule. I mean, to me, that's how a, a, a rule should be. There is no intent – it's not about intent, and that way you can if you take intent out of it, then it then well just, yeah I mean because you can't start judging intent, and that's that's where yeah it, but we do all the time, and I think there are some times where you do need to have intent as part of uh, of of a rule, otherwise it can be uh, so um, mechanically. Yeah applied that you get into an, a situation where the rule wasn't yeah. really meant to handle but well, it fits and, it and so it just gets applied and does craig know when he starts running that if he runs once he's been interfered with that he gets to score or is it just instinctually he's told to go and he goes and he trips and he keeps going because if he stops right there and and, and doesn't run he's out and, no he 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 can just go back to he could oh, have right. stayed at third and then he would not have been granted the only way you get granted home plate is if you oh, keep right, going right, right. yeah that was another I thought interesting yeah so no it, I, you know yeah so I mean there uh, so that in some way there's not intent there but right. there is some aspect of the game situation that comes in yeah I, you want to avoid umpires having to really evaluate the mental um, state of an athlete <laughs> right and what they were thinking and what they were intending but. I also don't want to just have mecha- just purely mechanical rules either. I mean, yeah. I think there has to be some level of interpretation and good judgment on the part of of the officials to apply the rules in a rational and, a, and applicable way. Uh, and that might mean sometimes not quite following the pure black letter of the law, but also thinking about what the spirit of the law meant. And mm-hmm. um, but that's tricky. It's real tricky how you do that because then you you don't want you don't want to give you don't want to grant them too much leeway there because then then you have the nba right. <laughs> um interesting um all right so uh moving on then to the awards uh, i was going to ask you why do you think the series went the way it did but you already answered that you think it was that the the cardinals offense just never got the going. cardinals offense never got going yeah um <clears throat> and uh and the then the cardinals pitching was great throughout p- pitched well enough to win but, but you guys had a few a, fee, a few key hits yeah cardinals have a few key hits can change and the, it, yeah, it could be completely whole. different and, I, that's and all it was. from my perspective I, I think just looking at the even just against the tigers as well i think the red sox were 
tended to be deeper and more athletic than the teams they were playing, at least in terms of the players that were available and healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they could do things and do thing and have a sustain sustain thing sustain things through the game mm-hmm. and through the series that the other, like the Tigers just you know they they can hit but that they they can't they don't really get a lot of extra base hits they don't really run they don't you know and then defensively they're not they're not as good except for their pitching and so yeah. the the Red Sox I think were just better all around against them and then similarly um, I think we were just we just had a little bit more depth than the Cardinals yeah. and so that we had just that slight bit of advantage that played itself out over the series. St. Louis could use one big guy, a big bat. I mean, mm-hmm. Holiday can hit, Beltran can hit, Craig can hit, but none of them are, they don't, they need, they could handle, that's the one thing about missing Pujols is have that guy who can change it with the swing. Mm-hmm. And they have well, a Hamilton lot of guys. Is, Hamilton's that guy. Uh, Holiday, sorry, not Hamilton. Ham- I just get Holiday? Confused. Yeah. No. You don't he, think so? He kind of is, but he, he scares the hell out of me. To me, right. he was the best hitter on the team. I didn't. I know. He was, was never no, really great, scared of Beltran. I was. It was. Yeah. It was when he came up that I was. You know. But you know, I mean, he's been at what he averages twenty some home runs a year, yeah. and which is a lot now, I guess. But but I still think he, he's good. But I think he's more of a number four guy. Okay. And not. I think they. I don't think he's. I think they need. Uh, Craig may be able to be that number three guy, but he has health. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't his fault that he tripped over the, the umpire or got in his way, but we won't yeah. go there. That happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so moving awards, on then awards, to the awards, 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 right? I think uh, you know the big, the, the one that always garners the most storylines, of course, is the MVP. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the American League, it was uh, Miguel Cabrera, and National League, um, what's it, Andrew McCutcheon, Andrew McCutcheon, McCutcheon, Andrew yeah. McCutcheon from the um, from the Pirates. Um, so. I know you, uh, you, you, you think the uh, NL MVP award should have gone to somebody different, so make your case. <laughs> I think it's obvious that Yadier Molina was the most valuable player to a team, but the thing is there's not a set, clear set of criteria, I suppose, no. for the MVP, and it really gets translated to batting average and home runs mm-hmm. and then RBIs. You know, it's might as well whoever closest to the Triple Crown gets it no matter how their team does right. on some level, and I think that's kind of kind of strange. But if you take into account Yadi's first half, where he's leading the league in average like 350, he had a little bump there in the middle, but still put together over 300 average, great season, clutch hitter. And then you add what he does defensively, not just keeping teams from running. R- Boston runs like crazy. Did they run against Yadi? No. Right? I mean, and so. Uh, did we? I, I, I think he had one. I think we had like one attempt, and yeah. that was it. Yeah, no, that was, there was, that was just, a huge change in the game plan. And, and so, and not just that, but as they said throughout, how he manages his pitchers. Mm-hmm. And all the young guys on the staff, oh, I just, we just listened to Yachty. He tells us, I mean, you don't have a lot of shaking calls off. You don't have, he, he knows the batters. He does his work. And I think as a, almost like a secondary coach behind the plate, um, both play wise and mentally, I think he adds so much to it. But then, if you're going to do that, then maybe you could just say, well, a really good catcher is more valuable. Is one of the most valuable positions on a team. Right. If you can have a catcher who can both hit and manage your pitching staff. So, I don't. It, it, yeah. That's just the problem with the award in general. But. Well, I mean, even if it's just the offensive t- statistics, I think you have a decent case. I mean. The batting averages. I'm just looking. So McCutcheon was 317, uh, and Molina was 319. Yeah, that's virtually identical. The uh, on base percentage, uh, 359 for Yadi and 389 for McCutcheon. So he's a little better there. The slugging percentage was 477, and McCutcheon was only 333. Yeah. And so when you get to the OPS, uh, Molina's got a better OPS. Um, than uh, uh, overall, which, it, you know. Yeah. So it does seem like statistically probably a better offensive player. I mean, 80 RBIs. That's, I mean, for uh, yeah. Bat, but he, and that's the guy who's batting in five or six in the order. Mm-hmm. He's gotten 80 RBIs. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of um, uh, kind of an advanced stat guy, and so RBI RBIs to me don't, is, mean, don't mean that much. I I, think, I'm not that impressed by, it's by it's RBI, a, unless they're, like, yeah. huge or really small. And he's a hard person yeah. to strike out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fifty-five strikeouts in five hundred forty-one at bats, plate mm-hmm. appearances, plate appearances. So, <clears throat> yeah. So, so why do you think McCutcheon got? You think it was just Pirates love story with America 
when the Pirates and just wanting to see see that and how yeah. important he was to that team. I think so. Yeah. And, I, and I think the other thing is, I mean, people said it's partly it could have been that uh, Matt Carpenter actually hurt Yachty's chances because he had so much attention too. Um, at second base, who mm-hmm. had a higher batting average, was the best leadoff batter in base, and so, and had led the had broke um, Sam Usual's record for most doubles, mm. and okay. so, um, so the, I said that that kind of hurt. It was the same time the year that Wainwright had such a great Wainwright and Carpenter both had really good seasons one year, so they both kind of drained Just from each other. And someone else got yeah. Cy Young, and so I think that's part of it too. Um, but and it's just, it's just not a flash, flashy player flashy position yeah um but i mean mccutcheon deserves it too i mean they, that's the thing there's probably a hand four five six guys who you could argue on each league that deserve the mvp and right. then how does it get shake out well what's mccutcheon like defensively i don't i mean i it's nl and then right, pirates right. i don't i don't you know i know him because I don't he does follow, some commercials <laughs> and i don't i haven't got to watch him a lot but i yeah. believe he's pretty strong okay i believe he's well, I, I don't know if he's gold glove or not but i know he's maybe um, but um, I know he's one. He is a a, a strong fielder. Doesn't easily list the Gold Glovers. Um, so I guess we maybe if we go here, baseball reference. <laughs> you know, because yeah, I mean they they yeah. When you're talking about it at this level, I mean for the most part, you're not talking about someone who doesn't deserve it. No, and no. Um, <clears throat> so that's. You know, it's similar when you get into on the AL side with Cabrera, where it's offensive numbers. Yeah. It's not defensive, obviously. Right. Um, you know, that's not what you think of when you think of <laughs> Cabrera. Uh, and so, you know, it does come down to, and this is what I, I I'm, not, I'm not really into the awards so much. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think they're that big a deal. Uh, and I, I don't think the players think they're that big a deal, um, separate from winning and separate from winning the World Series. But, <clears throat> you know, I think, uh, you know, when you look at Cabrera and you look at Trout, that it raises an interesting question, philosophic question, I think, about the idea of valuable, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Because obviously that presupposes the question, valuable to whom? That- and and, and what, is, what constitutes being valuable as a baseball player? To whomever you think yeah. you ought to be valuable to. That's probably why they were why the award is probably the most debated often. Yeah. I think, because rookie of the year, sure. Who who is the best rookie this year? Who had the well? You that know, one had a lot of debate uh, in but the it, NL. Yeah. Because uh, it seems like there was some concerted effort to deny it to to Puig, um, and give it to this guy Fernandez, who I don't think anybody knew who he was until he won right. the award. Um, which doesn't mean that he doesn't deserve it. He may have been the best rookie. I mean, I, I, I'm not in a position to evaluate that, but it did seem like Puig was the guy who was going to win that award, but the right. baseball writers just Oh, then there was Shelby it. Miller, who 15 mm. wins under three ERA. Yeah. But he finished uh, third, I think. But um, I Cy- mean, on the AL side, I think Will Myers, yeah, I, mean, he, yeah. The, I don't think that was a big deal. And then Cy Young, yeah, that doesn't... Garner, garner a lot of debate usually no and i would imagine cy young would be it, it gets the sense that that would be the one the players do that that would seem that seems mm. to be more prestigious oh, the, like the pitchers, a, yeah. you're a cy young award-winning pitcher and now if it's just the name of it that it has a name attached to it and right. it's just most valuable or rookie of the year you're, you're you they are, have and, names too but no one really knows right yeah. They, yeah and so i think to me no one walks some, around talking about the the yeah. landis award or something <laughs> the, the, i think there's some there seems to be something more prestigious about saying you're a Cy Young Award yeah. winner. Maybe. But, um, yeah, I think they do, yeah. And there might be contractual aspects of that, yeah. too. Um, so, it, you know, with Cabrera it's versus Trout, you do definitely get this question of the offense versus all-around player because that's when you read the different commentaries on why they voted for who or, uh, and mm-hmm. why, they, why some guys thought it should be Trout. You know, they talk about it. Well, he's just better all-around, contributes – on both sides, offense, defensively, fielding, and, and mm-hmm. all that, whereas uh, Cabrera really doesn't. Um, I, I think I would, I would probably take the maybe less popular choice of saying that your team should be in the playoffs at the very least. It should be in first place to have a most valuable player. Really? If you are the most valuable player in the National League and your team is not winning, how valuable, how could, you valuable really could you be? And so, it's, wow, Trout has a good season for a team that, couldn't win despite all the players that it has mm-hmm. i i'm just not impressed 
That's, yeah. You know. No, I, I think that has to be part of the calculation. I mean, I don't I don't think you ought to just rule a rule a guy out. Um, you know, a priori, just go, okay. Well, it's, I'm only looking at playoff teams. Um, but I do think that, that that's a factor nice. because it's not best statistical player. That, yeah, and it shouldn't be just best uh, offensive player mm-hmm. as well. Um, I mean, one uh, I was reading one article about it and, and was talking about the differences between Trout and Cabrera. And just uh, in terms of their offensive numbers, trying to make a case that actually Trout uh, w- was better offensively, uh, just in terms of extra count, looking at extra base hits, as well as the kind of errors that were committed, and so um, you know made the claim that that he contributed more extra base bases for his team and and committed less outs, and so in that way contributes better more for the offense of the team. So that I, I mean, I, you know that that might lead more to Trout, but then Cabrera's team. Was was in the playoffs, and the Angels weren't. Although at the same time, I'm not so sure that, that the Tigers don't make the the playoffs. If Cabrera sits in August for his because of his injury, I still think they make the playoffs. Um, do they do much in the playoffs? Well, they they didn't do much anyway. But no, they they got they got to the championship, so that's something. See, but now there's a let's 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 try to um, identify for a moment. Imagine the frustration of a. Tigers fan. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh yeah. I mean, imagine that they have. We have the Cy Young. They got two Cy Young awards in the we last. Two like, Cy Young awards. We, we get the MVP. For Orlando, one in eleven, I think, and we, we're we're getting about there. How many times? Back to back MVPs. Yeah. yeah. We get beaten five. We get beaten four. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's yeah. That's the point where you're getting like, okay, come on, mm-hmm. <laughs> Buffalo Bill territory. Yeah. Um, and some of that, you know, I think though you have to. Keep in mind uh, where they play the Central Division. Um, you know that it just may not be as competitive for them, uh, and so the the guys, the pitchers, they all have statistics that look better than comparable guys in other divisions that have more competition. Is that more akin to the American League? Because I don't, I don't get that as much in the National League. There seems to be more parity between the divisions. I don't think you could outright say this is the division to beat. Mm. And, it, it, I mean, it changes every year. It's a very fluctuating. Whereas I think in the in the um, American League, pretty much the East is the league to beat. The, the East is, I think, I mean, probably the most competitive, right? Uh, partly it's the Red Sox and the Yankees. And then... And the Rays. And, the Ray, I mean, the Ray, and then the Rays and the Orioles... Um, you know, being competitive uh, in their own ways. Toronto trying to be, but never quite mm-hmm. being able to get there. Uh, and then out in the West, yeah. I mean, the Angels. And, it's inconsistent. You never yeah, know from your Seattle's season. Seattle's terrible. Um, and, uh, you know, Central, you have what the, the Twins. The and, Twins, will, I mean, the Twins had that run there yeah. for quite a few years. And, and Cleveland and, was better this year, and they've been better in the past. So, mm-hmm. um, But then you have Kansas City and... and so I mean, yeah, it's it's it may be I don't know the NL enough to I mean, I know out in the West you have you have the Giants, you have the Dodgers, yeah, yeah, yeah Giants, Dodgers, Diamondbacks, who mm-hmm. all had you know pretty pretty solid, and then you have in the East you have um, uh, Phillies, Braves, Nationals, mm-hmm. Mets, not too long. I mean, but you know, and then of course in the in the in the Central, right, um, Cincinnati. Pittsburgh Brewers Cardinals. I mean, so there's there's a core group in each thing yeah. there, yeah. but there's not one that stands above. I don't think there's one division that stands above. Right. I mean, you know, so it's not. I don't think the, it's not the equivalent of playing in like um, I don't know, like the AFC South or something like that. But um, yeah, it, um, the Tiger and the Tiger. I mean, the, it's not to take away from those guys either. I mean, no. Verlander and Scherzer. I mean, Scherzer. I mean, those guys are incredible pitchers. Cabrera is an incredible hitter. Um, you know, and so they deserve they deserve the accolades they've they've been getting. Um, you know, I think when it comes to the MVP, I do tend more towards thinking that the best overall player uh, for the team, in terms of of that, that's what makes them valuable. But I I, I wouldn't stick to that hard and fast. I kind of like that. There's besides the fact that it always allows for a lot of discussion that you know that there isn't any identifiable criteria that you can yeah. vote on it uh, for. For any reason that you want, essentially, but at the same time, you know, you do get these yahoos who leave people off 
of their list completely and you're like you know how could you not even have that guy yeah. on the list you know they'll like leave Cabrera off the list altogether or something like that and it's like you can't do that I mean there's got to be some frame of reference here but you know in terms of how you think about what makes a guy valuable it can vary why doesn't why don't the managers and players vote instead of the tradition the, I mean that I mean, they they set up the award in the um late 30s 40s uh and that's that's when they set it up. Before that, there were other there were other awards that were equivalent, but mm-hmm. them, um, and so they they set it up and they decide they decided. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, at this it's point, the, I mean, Major League Baseball could so many, take it back. Yeah, I like the Silver Slugger Award. Yeah, and uh, what's that? The Silver Slugger Award. Yeah, it's just the best offensive yeah. at each position. I mean, that's, you know, yeah, and, and it goes around, and then that. Like, the, well, and then the yeah, Golden Glove, Gold Glove. Um, I, and in the, the batting titles, batting champion, yeah. stuff like that. All that stuff is just you know, um, isn't voted. It's purely, almost purely statistical. Yeah. So, well, then the manager of the year is probably to me one of the most difficult ones to assess yeah. because, again, if a, it, do you have to have a good season to be manager of the year? And does a good season mean you managed well? It's such yeah. a, it's very such a tricky. flimsy and, and non-transparent because mm-hmm. oftentimes, well, this team did really well. Was it because of the manager, in spite yeah. of the manager? Yeah, you and, know, and it, often it's the team that all oh, come out of nowhere. Oh, then you must get managed. Right. So why not just have an award for comeback team of the year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, looking at um, the, that award, I, I was surprised when Farrell didn't win. At the same time, I think Francona. Uh, did a lot for his team. And it's certainly real remembering that this is voted on before postseason happens. Yeah, which is good. I think it is good. I mean, it'd be nice in some ways if you could incorporate the postseason into it because that's a part of, of things. But at the same time, I think it would just become a matter of who did well in the postseason. Right. It would, you, it's it just too be. current and too meaningful for you to, to pull away from it and to, yep. to, to balance that properly. So I think it's, it's right that they do it that way. Same with the MVP. And then, um, you know, it, so, Francona, I think he did a fantastic job for Cleveland, as far as I can tell. I know he's a great manager. So, um, you know, and they, they improved a lot uh, from last year, and they were a competitive team. So, I, I think it's worthwhile. I still think Farrell should have should have had it. Um, but I don't, you know, I'm not... I'm not disappointed. I don't think Farrell's disappointed. I'm mm-hmm. sure. I'm sure Fracona would trade in a second and say, "Yo, you can have the manager award if I can have the World Series." And and I'm sure Farrell was like, "No, nah, I don't think so." Right. So you know, I in that sense, um, you know, I think Francona is certainly worthy to win it. I was just surprised, just given the the worst to first, and then how much the players talked about Farrell's role in the turnaround that. Um, it wasn't like they just brought in some players and that turned them around. It was the overall change in, in the atmosphere, which comes from the manager. So that seemed to me to indicate that a lot of it happened because of Farrell. And even, um, you know, I think it was John Lester said, you know, 10 minutes into spring training, we knew this guy was different and we knew that this was going to be a different year. Um, now, it doesn't take much again, to approve another, over, Bill, that's over Bobby Valentine. But sure, sure. And he, but he's saying that, yeah, and he's saying that at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, but guys were saying that in the beginning too. So I mean, you knew that it, it that, that that was part of it. But um, yeah, it, it's it's really hard to know and to evaluate managerial decisions. So much of it, you probably don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, and then there's different kinds of managers. Game ex, not X and O's, but obviously mm-hmm. it's not football. But that kind of in game managing versus leader of man managing yeah. versus uh, you know just that inspirational thing. And how much is it? I mean managing even when you get to that stage of the world series do you think just about this game or do you think long term of the club do you mm-hmm. think i mean there was the decision where matani had a bigger bench for the pitching and they kept mujica on the bench who had had i think 30 40 saves um led led the nl but then in about mid-august just lost it mm-hmm. was unable to pitch so it was obvious they weren't going to use him yeah but Matani was asked, "Why did you put him on the on the on the roster? You, he pitched like two innings and blowing out games, and that's it." And he's like, "Because he earned his right for the season, and it would have been disrespectful mm-hmm. to keep him off." So he made a decision about respect mm-hmm. and about team culture over what was probably best on paper for the team. Mm-hmm. That could have been another bench player. Could you know right? And but it did that with both him and Miller, and that that's one of the, I think I've heard some people con- you know there be controversy about that. But I yeah. mean, you got to think about the team and the players and what sort of do you, have you earned your right? Even though 
by that end, you know, Miller's arm is burnt out and Mojica's for whatever reason. Yeah. I think players would understand that. I mean, it's, you know, if a guy is, is clearly doesn't have it. And the fact that you have those more limited rosters, um, I, you know, but you have to know you, uh, that comes down to knowing knowing your team and knowing what might affect them mm-hmm. uh, and what might motivate them uh, longer term. Um, I, I'd probably err more on the side of of winning this year. <laughs> yeah, because uh, that nothing nothing does wonders for team team well, chemistry like winning. Yeah. Well, that's what so. I mean. Yeah, when you look at that, you think you got both those guys on the on the on the on the roster. You like one one of those guys could have been a bat. Mm-hmm. And 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 but. well, so um. Yeah, I, I mean, I, you know, and, and both Farrell and Matheny made decisions that could be described as, as brilliant and, and ones that could be described as, as foolhardy. Yeah. Um, and then the, the narrative is, well, which one's worked, yeah. right? Well, and that happens 162 games oh, yeah. a year. You watch on any given night and there are decisions. And so they just it gets so magnified yeah. in the playoffs that they're... And it's I just think it's really hard to try to evaluate the managing decisions because you don't... You don't often have, um, you know, repeated tests. Mm-hmm. You know, you you have a, a pitcher facing a hitter. You can have a couple repeated tests in that game throughout the season, and so you can try different things and see how. Okay, well, in this, okay, if I do this, then maybe this changes. With the managerial decisions, you don't really get to repeat those, and so there, it's. I think it makes it really, really, really hard. And there's a lot of reallys in there to evaluate a manager mm-hmm. um, on any particular given set of kinds of decisions and i think that that you know to some degree the managing is in terms of figuring out is the guy a good manager or not or you want to hire a guy i i think there's a, probably a lot of gut feeling goes on in terms of their just what what their feel is yeah. like of of their team and what their what their capabilities are and then and looking at looking obviously at the data but i think the data there uh, is probably really hard to tease out to me, a lot of, I think just as big a part is seeing how the team acts mm-hmm. and the team behaves, the team responds mm-hmm. to to whatever, good things, bad things. You know. And I just remember watching, a, a, I think I was watching a Cub game and watching Castro do one of his signature Castro, I'm not paying attention moments. <laughs> he caught a ball and was kind of lazy and, and a Cardinal player um, tagged in and scored. And this, he was way in shallow. I and mean, it's a shortstop, catches a pop fly and the guy tagged in because mm-hmm. he wasn't paying attention. Yeah. And they, uh, and and then he got benched later on. That. But I'm thinking to myself, this has happened to this kid so many times. And at that point, doesn't that have to be somewhat an imag- managerial thing? Seems that um, way. You know, yeah. but not being able to, but then I'm sure Mattingly is doing everything he can with Puig, yeah, right. you know, and at some point, well, some yeah, guys aren't, aren't, aren't going to be reached. Um, yeah. And, <clears throat> yeah. No, it's, I mean, that that's one of the things about baseball, which is so interesting because so much about the game is quantified. And yet so much of it is beyond quantified. Mm-hmm. And that as much data as we have, all these advanced statistics. War, the win above war, replacement. War, win which. above replacement. <laughs> and, you know, how much, uh, you know, all these different things that we measure and quantify the players and the managers and the teams and yet we you, we still don't know what's going to happen mm-hmm. and you still don't, I mean that's sports in general but I think baseball just because so much of it is quantified you'd think that it'd be more uh, I don't want to say predictable but that we could know more about it right. but then you know it still yeah. comes down to you know some guy tripping over someone in the baseline <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know and that's that's what makes baseball great final thoughts on 2013 baseball season I'm ready for spring training. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for spring training. Awesome. I'm hoping the cards pick up a shortstop. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, now we got the hot stove season and all, all that coming down and see who, who comes back and who gets signed. All right. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right. This has been the Sports Ethicist Show. You can find us at sportsethicist.com, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can email the show at sportsethicist at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening.